So there are two types of divers in the world. And I'm not talking about the old joke about who pees in their wetsuit and who lies about it. No, I'm talking about divers who are either weighted correctly or they're not weighted correctly. Today, we're gonna to talk about the first basic principle, the why and how to weight yourself correctly to go scuba diving. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hey guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I am Lyle. This is the second part in a series that we're bringing you about the five basic principles of scuba diving. On our first episode, I showed you this crazy diver and all of the weird things that was going on. And from that, we broke down the five basic principles. And those would be weighting, trim, buoyancy, propulsion, breathing, and breath control. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about the why and the how to correctly weight yourself to go scuba diving. As you know, I am the why instructor. If you understand the why, you're gonna have a much better understanding of the reasoning or the rationale for what we're asking you to do to be an efficient and safe scuba diver. If we're really gonna have a thorough understanding of the why, we need to understand Archimedes' principle. Archimedes, Greek mathematician from thousands of years ago, that he discovered the following. Any object that is partially or totally immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. Did that sentence just hurt your brain? Well, let's explain it. So with an object in the water, here's the object, it has weight and that weight applies a downward force, if we want to call that FW for weight. As that object sits in the water, it is displacing water from around it, and so that's where the weight of the water displaced comes into play when we're talking about Archimedes' principle. So not only will the weight of the object have a bearing on its buoyancy, but the volume of that object will also have a bearing on its buoyancy because the larger the volume, the more water it displaces, therefore the more weight of water it displaces. So that's where the buoyant force comes into play. As we displace water, we're now creating a, an upward force on that object, and we'll call that FB. If we look at the bottom equation, if FB minus FW is a positive number, that object is going to float. So that's why an aircraft carrier, which weighs hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tons, can float. It's because it is very heavy, yes, but it displaces a huge amount of water, which provides the upward buoyant force on that aircraft carrier. If that number is negative, when we take FW away from FB, then we know that that object will be negatively buoyant, meaning it will sink. And lastly, if these two numbers equal each other, then we reach the holy grail for divers, which is neutral buoyancy, which is what we're always trying to achieve when we're underwater. And we're gonna talk about that extensively when we get to the principle of buoyancy. A lot of new divers are surprised that we actually have to add weight to the gear that we wear to get into the water. Hopefully by understanding Archimedes' principle there, you'll understand that even though we wear a lot of gear that is heavy, it has volume and displaces a lot of water. And therefore, that gives us more upward buoyant force. Therefore, we have to add lead weight to compensate for that buoyant force. Unfortunately for a lot of new divers, instructors tend to overweight you at first. I've been guilty of doing this when I first started my teaching career, but now I want my student to understand these principles so that we can gradually work towards that perfect weighting by the end of their open water course. And so if you feel like you're still not getting your weighting down, then follow along. So we talked initially about two types of divers, those that are weighted correctly and those that are weighted incorrectly we can break down the weighted incorrectly into two more groups, those that have too much weight and those that don't have enough. Most commonly, it's the too much variety that we see initially. So when it comes to too much weight, what are some of the problems behind that? Well, we're defeating Archimedes' principle, right? We're able to overcome that buoyant force, we can go diving. And I've got lots of divers who have told me, ah, I just use my BCD, I just put extra air in my BCD, that compensates for that overweighting. Well, what are we actually doing there? One, we're wasting air because we're using more air in our BCD than we need to. So that makes an inefficient use of air during our dive. Two, by overinflating our BCD, we're actually making that a larger, more voluminous object. That creates drag as you move through the water. So you're gonna to have to generate more force 
to propel yourself through the water. In addition to that, by carrying extra weight, your body has to propel that through the water. So in addition to the drag, you're also carrying more weight that you have to kick harder and faster for. The other thing that we tend to see is it affects your trim position. In the next episode, we're definitely gonna cover more about how to perfect your trim position. So if you're overweighted, typically that means that in your pockets or your weight belt, you're overweighted in those areas, that tends to drag down the lower half of your body. And instead of being in that nice horizontal diver position, you may be presenting more uh, surface area to the water. And again, that makes you inefficient. And lastly, because of the increased drag, the increased weight that we have to move through the water and our poor trim position, our gas consumption is going to go up. So what about someone who has too little weight? Well, the first problem you're gonna run into is your descent. It's gonna to be tough to get under the water. Uh, I've even seen some divers go head first and try to kick themselves down. Once that water weight starts to compress you, yes, you might be able to get under the water with some difficulty. Then maintaining buoyancy, staying at an appropriate level during that entire time, even though you may not have to have any air in your BCD. But most importantly for me, from a safety perspective, is when we're doing our safety stop at the end of that dive, can you stop yourself at that 15 foot or five meter level and not continue to ascend to the surface. So some of you out there might be saying, okay, Lyle, that's fine, that's great, we get the Archimedes principle. Where do we start? How do we know how much weight to even begin with? And so as a starting point, I'm going to put up a table here of the basic weighting guidelines that we use initially with a student. On this basic weighting guidelines table, it shows you, number one, what type of exposure suit is the student going to be wearing? How thick is that neoprene going to be? Or are you wearing a dry suit? All of those things can have significantly different buoyancy characteristics. What type of BCD are you wearing? Are you taking an aluminum versus a steel tank? What type of regulator system do you have? Those all come into play. The different gear and the different gear configurations certainly can have an effect on your buoyancy and buoyancy characteristics. You personally, your size, your body shape, and your body composition will also have an effect. Different tissues have different buoyancy characteristics. So uh, this is a starting point. It's certainly not set in stone that when we are at the end of our class that you're going to meet exactly these basic weighting guidelines. So let's go into a little bit more detail on how we then refine that to get you at the right weight. So let's get to the weight check. So the basics of a weight check, you should do this anytime that you've changed conditions, anytime you buy a new piece of equipment, a new wetsuit, new BCD, uh, if you haven't been diving for a while, if you've gained or lost a lot of weight, a good idea before going diving is to get in the water, do a weight check, make sure you're appropriately weighted for your new gear configuration. So to perform a weight check, we're gonna enter the water, remaining positively buoyant at the surface, and get to an area where it's too deep for you to actually stand up anymore. We then wanna place our regulator in our mouth. We wanna stop all movement. We're gonna stop kicking, stop sculling, just be stationary. At that point, you're going to take a normal breath in, just a normal breath and hold it. It's the one and only time in scuba diving that we're gonna let you hold your breath because you're holding it from the surface. And then you're going to fully deflate your BCD. And if appropriately weighted, you should sink to about eye level, about halfway up the lenses of your mask. Then, by breathing out fully, you become negatively buoyant and you should be able to sink. If none of those things happen, meaning you don't sink to this level, you may need to add more weight, or if you sink immediately, you may need to subtract some weight. But at this point, we also have to take into account, did we perform the weight check with a full tank? versus a almost empty tank that's almost at reserve pressure. We need to take into account something that's going to happen within our cylinder during a dive. So here I have diagrammatically represented, not a great artist, my apologies, but a, a cylinder. And we're gonna use an 80 cubic foot aluminum cylinder because that's the most common cylinder that new divers are going to learn with. So, well, let's get this principle down. So 80 cubic feet or 2,200 liters of compressed air is contained in that when it's full at a working pressure of 3,000 PSI or a little over 200 bar. When we are diving, we are going to consume 
this gas and we're going to breathe it. We're going to use some to put in our BCD. So ultimately we're going to lose some of the volume or the contents of that cylinder. Air has weight. And so if we have a full cylinder inside the cylinder itself, the compressed air itself weighs about 6.5 pounds or 2.25 kilograms. If we were to breathe this down to our what we call reserve pressure, and one of the things that we uh, instill upon our students all the time is the fact that we always want to get out of the water with at least 500 PSI in our tank. That is not your 500 PSI, that is there in a reserve or emergency capacity, particularly for your buddy if they had an issue during a dive. So if we were to breathe down and get out of the water with 500 PSI or about 35 bar uh, remaining pressure, the gas that's left in there now weighs 1.1 pound or 0.5 kilograms. So during the dive, we lose four to five pounds of weight just by the mere act of breathing and consuming our gas. So during our weight check, depending on how we do that, we need to take this into account. So another question we get frequently is, well, what if I'm diving with a steel tank versus an aluminum tank? Uh, I don't need to take as much weight, correct? And that, in essence, is true. A steel tank is comparatively heavier, more dense. You will need less additional weight added to your system. But the gas consumed within that steel tank versus the aluminum tank weighs the same. And so you're still going to have to compensate for that gas loss even if you're using a steel tank. So keep that in mind. So if we do our weight check with a full tank, we need to compensate for that by adding an additional four to five pounds, two to 2.25 kilograms of weight to ourselves to make sure that we are appropriately weighted, particularly at the end of the dive when we've consumed the most amount of gas and we can stop ourselves at that 15 foot or five meter safety stop. And in our classes, what we try to do is keep on hand a reserve tank so that our students can use that tank to really dial in their weighting at the surface. So we've got a tank with 500 PSI in it. They can then do the weight check. If they sink to this level, breathe out and sink, they don't have to add additional weight because we know that they are appropriately weighted using that reserve tank. This is a question I ask of a lot of my students during training. When you're in fresh versus salt water, do you have to wear more weight in salt water or fresh water? And most of the time, my students get this correct. And when I ask them why, they tell me because salt water is denser. And that is absolutely correct. But if we go back to Archimedes' principle, let's break that down even more. Salt water, one liter of salt water weighs 1.03 kilograms. Because of all the extra salt and mineral that's dissolved in that one liter, it weighs more than one liter of fresh water, which weighs one kilogram. So again, if we go back to Archimedes' principle, if we take the same object and put it into salt water versus fresh water, it will displace the same volume, but because this fluid weighs more than that fluid, we need to take more weight with us to compensate for the fact that the volume of water that we displace in salt water weighs more than that of fresh water. There is one other method once you have some experience under your belt that you could then refine your weighting even more. So if you're continuing to try and dial in and just perfect your weighting, another option would be at the end of a dive and at the end of the safety stop, don't do this at the beginning of your safety stop, you could then remove some of the weight. And ideally what you should try and do is have one or two pound weights. They could be those little soft weights or one or two pound lead weights that you can then maybe hand off to a buddy at your safety stop to determine, okay, uh, can I steal some weight and remain in this hover position with no air in my BCD? Another safety perspective on this would be, it would be great if the boat had a 15 foot safety bar. And so you could be right there. If you felt like suddenly you're underweighted and you're starting to float up and you can't control that, you've got a way to hold on to that. We don't want to have uncontrolled ascents. But this is a way where you could then steal an extra pound or two hand it off to a buddy and make some determinations if you could dive with even less weight. And I'm just curious for uh, certified divers or experienced divers out there that are maybe watching this uh, for a review, 
Um, how did you come about your weighting? How, what kind of techniques did you use? What were some of the things that you did to really dial in your weighting and perfect it? Share your comments down below for new divers to kind of check that out and see how you actually went about achieving appropriate weighting for your diving. And guys, if this has been helpful to you, as always, please click that like button down below. We love spreading the word of everything scuba to other scuba divers, and that would sure help us out here with the YouTube algorithm. Now you know how to dial in your weighting. Next up, we're gonna talk about how do we use that weighting, how do we disperse it around our body appropriately, and what are some of the techniques we can use to achieve that perfect horizontal diving trim position instead of looking like a semi-upright fish as we swim through the water. Click the link down below me and go check that out next.